Okay, we're back. Thank you so much, Rick and uh, Maggie. Thanks for uh, hanging in there. I wanted to ask you a question, and uh, it was really interesting. I had not heard, Rick, about you had both of those films. You had a 90-day time window, yeah. which is pretty pretty stressful. Um, but Maggie, you brought in some money for Movie Money Confidential, and I'd like to ask you about the taboo subject of approaching <laughs> some of your closest friends to invest you don't you don't have to mention anyone's name right but walk through that experience of approaching some of your best friends and you actually brought in some investment money well it was really an interesting process because the the people who were wanted to hear about it i mean that was kind of like well you put them down as a true friend i had I definitely had some people that wanted to invest and just couldn't because of liquidity, as you say in the movie, Scott, it's it it's really you go in thinking you believe that everybody wants to invest and they really want to help you and movies are pretty exciting. So I really had that in the back of my mind of it's actually an exciting experience and the opportunity, how many, how many people really get a chance to invest in a movie. So I think the thing that really helped me was I knew I knew the answers to the questions that they asked. They were very detail oriented, wanted to know, you know, projected timelines, the budgets, how many people were in, how long this was going to take. And I think just knowing where we were in the independent film world and investment and how how they were going to come, how our film was going to come out and actually make money, which was we're in a really challenging time, huge numbers of, of shakeups in our industry of what, what you can predict, what's actually going to happen. So I just had such confidence in what we were doing and that it would really hit a sweet spot of people interested to rent our film, to buy our film. So I think a lot of it was, I didn't really care if they said no or not. I just wanted a yes or a no. So I think going in and not taking anything personally, having all the answers for their questions and just being really open about, hey, you know, it's no problem if you don't want to do it, but this could be really fun. And sure, knowing that, yes, you can lose all your money. So I didn't ever want anybody to invest any more than they'd, you know, not really worry about. So the experience, it was it was kind of fun. I mean, it was a it was a good chance to get together with some people I hadn't seen in a while, and to catch up. And just if they wanted to be part of it, great. If not, no big deal. But yeah, you're right. I did get a few people to say yes and to come in to Movie Money Confidential as an investor. Cool. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people put so much pressure on themselves and the people. And like you said, you don't really care who says yes or no. You just want to just share it and then whoever says yes says yes whoever says no move on so uh, yeah the yeah. biggest the biggest mistake scott people make and i've made it so i'm guilty judge maybe is the worst answer yeah. no yeah. is a much better answer than maybe and you've got to get a yes or you've got to get a no uh and if they need a day or two that's fine but if it goes on like a week or so the longer it goes they're not going to do it you know it's just it's it, it's it's the quick yes and the slow no, and I've I've been in many many pitch meetings for movie funding that people literally, you know, will say to their wife, "Go downstairs and get the checkbook out of the glove box." Yeah. I'm in. I was in. And I was and I would say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. you, you got to sign the paperwork. You got to read the paperwork. You know, you got to talk to my lawyer. You can't. You know, I don't think I ever did a fundraising meeting in Orlando without our legal counsel there because no, it just speeded up the process." which is how we were able to do it so quickly. And, um, but you, they got to read the paperwork. I like them to sleep on it. Mm -hmm. But when people call me up and say, well, maybe mm -hmm. for more than, like, you know, no, two no. or three days, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, look, it's, you know, it's fine. If it's no, just tell me. Yeah. But maybe we'll destroy you mm -hmm. because it gives you false hope. It creates this false relationship with the potential investor and it drags it out. What you're trying to do, because the best news you can call and say, hey, I just got someone that came in this morning. Do you want to come in or not? Because that's the other thing that happens when you've got a really great project. Investors will tell friends and then the word kind of spreads and they're like, oh, well, you know, you should look at this project. And and so 
that happens. So I'm always like, maybes are death. <laughs> yes or no, those are good answers. Keep moving. Yeah. Well, I think you made a you made a really good point too, is you have your paperwork. So when you're talking to friends or relatives or associates, it's not all on you. You have the legal paperwork for them to then take a look at. You're just trying to get a person to a point of looking at all the details. You're not an attorney. You're not a CPA. You can answer certain questions about the industry and about your project, but you can't tell them anything solid legal or solid, solid accounting. So you just have to keep that in mind. And to me, that actually makes it easier. It's like, here's our paperwork, talk to your attorney, talk to your CPA, see if it's a fit. I don't know, I don't know your situation, but hey, we've got this really cool thing going on. And the other thing is to never prejudge. I mean, people that came into our film, you never would have guessed yeah. that they that yeah. they would do it. I yeah. mean, you just, or the people that were perfect and like Rick was saying, said yes or said maybe, I mean, they were just killing us and you just, you really can't, you can't do a lineup and, and declare absolutely who's coming in, who's coming out or not coming in. You just, you just go for it and you just have fun with it. It's not that hard to actually sit down and talk to people about investing in a film, but I think there's all this emotion tied up in it and it's rejection. But Scott, I mean, you're an actor, you <laughs> You have to be used to rejection to be an actor. People yeah, you just don't worry about it. Next. Yeah, it's like, pff, whatever. Yeah, next. It's the same thing with fundraising. You just have to ha be yeah. yourself, have fun with it. Don't get tied in knots. And it's nothing personal. So I want to thank you both. I, I totally forgot about this tropical storm bearing down in Florida for uh, for doing this tonight. But um, before we go, um, any parting words of advice, Rick, for first or second time filmmakers? Well, it's a great question, Scott. And I have four pieces of advice. Number one, I think, is be very truthful with everybody you deal with. I don't care if it's your crew, your cast or um, your investors. Just tell the truth. Don't try to be something that you're not. Uh, it'll make everything go smoother. Uh, and actually telling the truth is refreshing for a lot of people because people that are investors get hit with all kinds of stuff all the time. So I think that's a cornerstone. I think another cornerstone, get a business plan, either you know buy a book on how to write a business plan or take a course or hire someone to do it, but get a professional business plan. That's what investors, their lawyers and accountants are used to reading. So you wanna have a top-notch business plan. And number three, uh, in addition to the business plan, get the best entertainment lawyer you can. The most money you can afford, spend it on that entertainment lawyer and listen to what they say. They'll keep you out of trouble. It'll give, it'll make your team very solid for investors when they look at it, other attorneys. And the last thing, Scott, and this is sort of a trend now. Uh, people are, are retaining people to consult, like a supervising producer or a consultant. Get somebody on your team who has successfully made a movie that came in on or under budget and got distribution. I don't care how much money it made or didn't make. You finished the film, you went out in the marketplace, you got distribution. So if you have these four elements, if you're a truth teller, you got a great business plan, you got great legal counsel, and you got a pro on your team, the rest of it will fall in the place and it will reassure your investors and their advisors that you know what you're doing. That's that's really solid advice. And um, especially the last one, and uh, this is not a pitch to hire me, but if you if you bring in another producer that has a lot more years of experience you you're going to save a lot of time and um that's what we actually did on my very first feature film the bros um you know is jonathan fig myself john tyndall we're we're kids just a few out of years out of school we didn't really have deep resumes at all we had done a bunch of shorts and we brought in tracy frankel and i think having an experienced seasoned supervising producer uh, helped make investors feel comfortable. So Absolutely. Maggie, um, same question for you. What what advice would you give to first or second time filmmakers? 
Well, I think what, like Rick was saying, and you were just saying is the team is super important. There's going to be a lot of holes to fill of knowledge that you don't have and just get people around you that you can trust. And if possible, have some fun with it. And just so there's some enthusiasm around. So people want to be with you and want to work with you. And as you have this team, you never know also where the funding is going to come from, who might have that connection to really get your independent film made. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the enthusiasm part. And uh, both of you guys are probably two of the most passionate, enthusiastic mm -hmm. people I've ever met, let alone worked with. So there's something to be said for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We, so, we like to help people. Yeah, yes. yeah, I definitely know that. And um, if, if um, before we wrap, I want to make sure... I ask you both, what's the best way to follow you or to contact you in case anyone has any questions? I pretty much am, am, am reachable through Twitter. If you follow me and DM me, um, I talk to people almost every day. I try to respond, you know, mm -hmm. as much as I can. And I'm also on LinkedIn, which is pretty, I've met some pretty terrific people on there. And, you know, sometimes it can be just giving somebody a piece of advice or saying, oh, it doesn't really work that way. Um, you know, and, and just trying to help people gently getting them in the right slot. Uh, so, you know, any way I can do it, Twitter, LinkedIn, Maggie, what about you? Well, our company is, tw has Twitter handle at Pamplin Film Co. And Rick's right. We've heard from so many people who have seen our film that we've actually spoken with Zoom or call and tried to help with their projects. Then we also have a YouTube channel, Pamplin Film Company. And there's a lot of videos on there helping other people, you know, get their films made, good content there. And then at moviemoney.com, the website, you can go through there to our film, Movie Money Confidential, is playing for a limited time for free. And the links are on moviemoney.com. And also there's a bonus for the book, Filmmakers and Financing business plans for independence. There's a 30% off limited time, I think until the 20th with a promo code that you can see there. Okay. And that is promo code BOA30, correct? Yes, that's it. Okay. And by the way, I think over 20 plus years, I've bought in myself two or three mm -hmm. editions of the book. So I highly recommend the book. If you're going to get it, might as well get it 30% off. Um, thank you both so much. And, uh, I appreciate you putting these episodes on your YouTube channel. If you like the Pamplin Film company, uh, videos, click the little button that says subscribe. Um, that'll get you more subscribers. You can thank me later. Um, <laughs> but, uh, thank you both for, uh, for hunkering down during this tropical storm and, uh, for being on tonight. All right. Good luck to everybody and see you at the movies. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Take care. Thanks for listening, and remember, it's time! There's never been a better time to make your own indie film, and if you have a dream project you're excited about and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.